Hey everyone, my name is Josh and welcome back to your four stimulus check and news update. In today's video, we have a lot of news to get into, but first, if you would like to receive a couple of free stocks from Webull, valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link in the description box below. Okay, so jumping right into it today, the education department recently announced it will forgive student debt for more than 100,000 people, who attended ITT Tech. Now, this benefit will be exclusively for those who attended ITT Tech but left before graduating. This will be for an eight-year window starting on March 31st and extending through their closure in 2016. During that period, the Department of Education claims ITT Tech lied about its financial health and also misled students into taking on debt they simply couldn't repay. This will result in $1.1 billion in loan forgiveness for around 115,000 people who attended this institution. Some lawmakers continue to call for more student debt to be canceled though, as Senator Elizabeth Warren tweets, after the 2008 financial crisis, young people were shoved into a weak job market and plunged even deeper into student debt. Many never recovered financially. We must do better this time and hashtag cancel student debt. In some other news, with the House gone from Washington until September 20th, the hope is when they return, they'll take up the bipartisan infrastructure bill within one week. Since centrist Democrats made an agreement with Democrats further on the left to approve the budget blueprint, they now have an agreement in place to vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill by September 27th. However, the more liberal Democrats are still saying they have no plans on voting on the bipartisan infrastructure bill until they first pass the much larger $3.5 trillion piece of legislation. And given the pure size of the bill and how large it's going to end up being, passing it before the 27th could prove to be difficult. At this point, the votes are most likely there, which means that both bills are likely to pass, which, of course, also means they're likely to have an additional four and a half trillion dollars in national debt. This is also why recently over 100 House Republicans signed a letter promising not to vote to raise the debt ceiling. In the letter, it reads, since taking control of the United States federal government with the presidency, a narrow majority in the House and Vice President Harris providing the deciding vote in an evenly split Senate, Democrats have embarked on a massive and unprecedented deficit spending spree. Without a single Republican vote, they passed a $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill in March, even though $1 trillion was still unspent from previous bipartisan COVID relief bills. Now they have passed a $3.5 trillion budget resolution, again without a single Republican vote. The nonpartisan committee for a responsible federal budget has calculated that a more honest score of this budget resolution will likely exceed $5 trillion. In order for this spending to occur, our nation's debt limit will have to be increased significantly. Because Democrats are responsible for the spending, they need to take responsibility for increasing the debt ceiling. They have total control of the government and unilaterally ability to raise the debt ceiling to accommodate their unilateral spending plans. Indeed, Democrats have the ability to raise the debt limit through the budget resolution by introducing appropriate language in the upcoming reconciliation process. Doing so would not require a single Republican vote and would appropriately require each and every Democrat to take responsibility for their out of control spending. We should not default on our debts under any circumstances. If Democrats threaten the default, it will only be because they refuse to vote for the debt ceiling increase necessitated by their own irresponsible spending. Democrats at any time have the power through reconciliation to unilaterally raise the debt ceiling and they should not be allowed to pretend otherwise. We, the undersigned Republican representatives, are letting Democrat representatives and the American public know that we will not vote to increase the debt ceiling, whether that increase comes through a standalone bill, a continuing resolution, or any other vehicle. This is a problem created by Democrat spending. Democrats will have to accept sole responsibility for facilitating it. Representative Kevin Brady, also Republican, breaks down the Democrats' budget plan as well as the bipartisan infrastructure deal and gives his true thoughts on both pieces of legislation. But it, it, what do you think the, the, the odds are that both of these, the infrastructure and the reconciliation deal, are both uh, completed by 
the end of next month? You know, uh, it could be good. I think uh, Democrats have a lot of momentum uh, after this uh, week's vote. I don't think anyone dreamed that the speaker would be able to, in effect, bully uh, every member of her conference into giving a green light to these tax increases. But she did. And Ways and Means Democrats, two weeks from this morning, will begin marking up, that is, voting on a package of tax hikes. We assume somewhere around $2 trillion, but uh, up to them. And I think uh, you know, right now they've got uh, more of a green light for tax hikes than they did a week ago. The uh, the way that it played out, the what, nine or ten guys, I, I you know you've been there for a while, but I, I just had Congressman Gottheimer on the day before, and I I don't know, I was a little bit surprised. Were you surprised, or you just were like, ah, I know how this works? Well, surprised in what way, Joe? <laughs> Did that seem like those nine moderate uh, Democrats accomplish anything by having a September 27th vote? Day? After all the bluster and all the talk and all the, I'm going to do this and I'm in this position and I'm not going to change and they better come to the... T you think that th there was anything that they actually got from Speaker Pelosi to, to go along with that and fold? Yeah, uh, the short, short answer is no. Uh, really, that, that was almost a sense of uh, the House, that they would have a vote. And the progressives made it very clear that same day they are not voting uh, on an infrastructure bill until uh, the tax hikes and, and spending uh, is headed to the president. So uh, while the speaker may have given assurances, uh, her conference did not. One, I think these are, are good uh, members of the Democrat caucus, I think, trying to find a more moderate way through. But right now, it just doesn't look like there are any Main Street moderates who are going to step forward and stop the certainly these tax hikes uh, in a major way, and I think that's going to that's going to resonate in the next election in a big way too. Well, I saw a list of, of all the, the tax hikes that are there. The three and a half trillion uh, is, at this point is is a number that I guess that's the high end uh, of what the the Democrats are really hoping for, um, and all those the tax cuts that I saw out or tax hikes that I saw outlined probably won't make it in, into the final bill. What do you expect it uh, to, to be to get Manchin and Cinema on board? What do you expect yeah. it to look like in terms of total and in terms of what survives? Yeah, boy, Joe, I, I don't know. You know, I would assume uh, uh, they're going after the corporate rate in a pretty aggressive way. That's, uh, that costs about a million jobs over the next two months. I think energy taxes uh, in a significant way just because of the the obsession with fossil fuels, that's a million and a half jobs lost over time. I think you'll see international tax changes, which I think will drive more jobs overseas. Certainly, you'll see tax increases on pass-throughs, you know, either on their loss limitation, uh, on the 20 percent deduction or expansion of the uh, Obamacare taxes on their investment. Um, beyond that, uh, there are some other changes, I think, that drive them up to a trillion and a half pretty quickly. Uh, but again, Democrats are driving the, the car on this one. So I don't know. We'll know in, uh, in two weeks from today uh, what that package is going to look like. Do you, do you, are you in favor of the, <clears throat> the infrastructure bill, Congressman? No. You don't like that either. What, what, do, you, what yeah, do you suggest look, uh, to fix the stuff that needs to be fixed. How do we do it? It's yeah. been something we've been wanting to do for a long time. You don't even yeah. like that? No, I do. I think there's I think there's about a third of that bill that's true infrastructure. I think I, it, might, it might even get unanimous support uh, in, in both chambers. I, I think way too much of it is wasteful spending and certainly a lot of the, the green welfare subsidies, a number of the, we just don't need that right now uh, as we're trying to rebuild this economy. So Brady obviously doesn't seem too happy with how things are going. Okay, moving along to some other news where on a happier note, if you are a resident in California, you may soon be receiving another $600 check. This is a part of the second Golden State Stimulus Program where it's currently being estimated that two out of every three California residents will be eligible to receive these payments. This past weekend, the governor of California, Gavin Newsom tweeted, Round two of Golden State stimulus checks start to go out this week. Two out of three Californians are eligible for $600 or more, 
we're putting money directly back into the pockets of those that need it the most. If you are a resident in California and want to check on your payment status, you can always check out the wait time dashboard, which I will go ahead and leave a link in the description box below. Speaking of checks, families with children should expect the third round of child tax credit payments to begin going out in just two weeks. Even though in August, the payments went out just a little bit earlier on the 13th, most people should expect to receive their money next month, once again, on the 15th. Just as a refresher, for families with children under the age of six, they'll receive $300 per child. Then for parents with children ages six to 17, in that case, you'll be receiving $250 per child. Also, if you never end up receiving your payment from August and you receive the first one in July via direct deposit, you should expect the payment to arrive in the mail at some point this week. Unfortunately, although not uncommon, the IRS did have an error where many payments were not able to be sent out via direct deposit. However, thankfully, the IRS was aware of their mistake and they have already processed checks to be sent out in the mail for parents who never ended up receiving them. With that said, let me know in the comment section below whether or not you received your last child tax credit payment. And finally, before I wrap up today's video, I did just want to quickly mention that there is still time to continue applying for rental relief programs if you or anyone that you know needs any type of assistance. As we all know, the Supreme Court recently reversed the CDC's eviction moratorium, meaning that many families will no longer have the protection. So in the description box below, I will leave a link where you can seek out different programs depending on where you live. And if you need any help whatsoever in finding assistance for your state, leave a comment below with the city and state in which you live, and I or other members of our community will do the very best that we can to help. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you would like to receive a couple of free socks from Weeble, make sure to quickly claim them by clicking my link, which you'll find in the description box below. To receive the first free stock, you will need to fully open an account. Then to receive the second free stock, which will be valued up to $2,000, you'll need to make a qualifying deposit of at least $5. Even if you aren't interested in investing or continuing to invest at this point in time, you can always sell the free stocks that you receive and transfer that money, however much they're worth, right back into your bank account. So free stocks or free money, however you decide. So once again, I hope everyone has a great and safe rest of their day and I'll see you in the next video.